Hey guys, this is Kate, and today I want to share with you my review of this Hero Arts Ombre ink pad. Now, this is the red to pink, but it also comes in a few different colors. And here's a photo of the different color combinations that you can get. There's like an orange one, a blue one, a green one, and a black to uh, gray, I think. So this is what it looks like when you open it up. There's the darker pat, pat on the top, then a medium color, and then a lighter color. So depending on what um, you know color you get, they'll look like this. And they're the same kind of formulation as the regular Hero Arts mid-tone shadow inks. And they're, they're a dye ink, which means that they'll soak into the paper instead of sitting on top of the paper like a pigment ink does. And I, I'm not exactly sure what three shades they are because I don't have all of the Hero Arts inks, but you'll see later in the video that I kind of... Um, tried to figure it out and do it on my own without using this ink pad. I tried to do it with three different ink pads. So I'm going to show you a sample of the very first time I used this ink pad. And that's, of course, the number one, then the number two image, and then the number three image. And what one thing that I did realize is that the individual color strips were not level on my ink pad. In other words, I believe it was the darker color and the lighter color stood up a little bit higher than the middle one, which caused it not to get ink on the stamp when I tapped the stamp onto the top of the ink pad. So I kind of had to fiddle with it, and I did have to fiddle with it again in this video, and you'll see that later. So these are the stamps that I'm using. I'm using a solid image from Studio Calico, and then I'm using a kind of bolder brush script um, from Studio Calico also. I don't know how well this would do with a very fine stamp, so I thought that using a solid image would probably work the best. So what I'm going to do is start at the bottom and kind of saturate the stamp with the lighter color and then slowly move it up towards the top just to get some of that darker color on the top of the stamp and move it back and forth a little bit to kind of blend them so you don't have any like harsh demarcation lines of where the colors stop and start, I guess. And I noticed when I was stamping that it wasn't really getting color in the middle. So I, you'll see in a minute, I again have to um, kind of push the ink pad down a little bit. I also learned along the way that at least for me, I feel like it looks the best when you use the least amount of the darkest color, which kind of doesn't really make sense because you would think if you use more of it, the more contrast, the better that it would look. But you'll see as I, I do a couple of different, um, tries at this. I also learned that you really, really, really need to use a stamp pad with this, like a, like a, um, or a mouse pad. If you have a mouse pad or any kind of foam, I used the, we are memory keepers, like stitching pad that comes with the stitch tool, but you could use any kind of foam thing that you have around. So here you can see, I'm taking the end of a plastic spoon and kind of pushing down those the darkest and the lightest colors to try to make them even with the middle. I'm going to try to stamp again. I think I'm going to stamp it twice without the stamping pad underneath it, and then I'll stamp it once with it, and you'll see that there's a pretty big difference. So again, I'm just kind of tapping that color, and I honestly, if I had to rate this stamp pad, I would give it like a four out of ten because I'm. When I sit down to do a project, I don't allot a whole lot of time to do it. I kind of want to get it done quickly. And most importantly, I think I don't invest a whole lot into this, you know, like tools and ink pads and stuff. I have, I, mean, I have a good variety, but I want things that I know are going to work every time. You know, I have my favorite black inks, I have my favorite colored inks, and I know that they work, and I know how they stamp, and they stamp the same every time. Even if it stamps poorly, it stamps poorly every time. This, on the other hand, is very um, unreliable, I guess is the right way of saying it. And to me, that is a not a good product, because... I want to know that when I've spent time on the base of a card or something and I go to stamp my sentiment, that it's going to look the same. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I'm asking you a question like you can answer me. But you'll see that it is very inconsistent, at least for 
for me. I, I want to make very clear that this is all just my opinion of this product. I've seen Jennifer McGuire make a video on this product and I think two other girls make videos on this product and they had very different things to say. So I think it depends on a ton of different factors. Your technique, where you live, you know, if there's humidity, I think that can make a difference. You know, how you stamp, just all kinds of what paper you use, what stamp you use. I think all that can make a difference. I'm just saying that in my opinion, for me, I find it to be very inconsistent. Sometimes the results are awesome and I love the way that it looks. Most of the time, it's not a solid image and it looks, it doesn't look good. I will show you a way that I figured out how to do it, that I get consistent results, that I do like the way that it looks, and it doesn't require having this ink pad. So I don't know what that what that says. But um, And I find that these are expensive. I think they're about $8 or $7, which is 2 or $3 more than a regular ink pad. And I don't, I don't, I just don't, I don't know. It definitely works better on a word stamp like this, the amazing. It definitely, um, I think, worked better this way. Now, here is where I did some playing around. So, here I used the neon red, the bubble gum, and the passion flower. Then, I also tried it with Studio Calico inks and then with pigment inks. It didn't work the greatest with pigment inks. It worked pretty well with the Studio Calico inks. I didn't. I tried to do it in the same color scheme as this. I think there's better color schemes in those inks to, to do um, because just of the range of the colors that they have. But I was super happy with the results of using these three Hero Arts inks. And they look like they're not going to go together at all, but trust me, in the end they do. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to cover what I want to be the darkest part with some washi tape because I don't want to contaminate my stamp pads. I know that people say it doesn't, do anything with pigment ink. I can understand that because you can just kind of wipe it off. But with this, it's soaking in. I just, I don't know. So I'm going to stamp the whole uncovered part with this lighter color, which is the passion flower. And then I'm going to flip the stamp around. And so I could, so I cut, so I'm basically stamping on top of the washi tape and then on top of the middle portion, which is what I want to be the kind of mid-tone color. And then I'm going to remove the washi tape and stamp the darkest part. And I am overlapping some just so that it blends in together and I don't have like a crazy line of where it starts and stops. So now I'm going to the darkest color and you'll see that I'm kind of tapping it on there. And I really like the, the result of this. You can see how it, um, it turns out right here. And it's pretty darn similar to the middle color and the end color are almost identical. The red that I use, the neon red, is a little brighter than the red that comes in the um, Ombre ink pad. So I'm not sure if that's the same. I, I'm not sure what red they used. It's, I think it's the only red Hero Arts ink pad I have, so that's the one I used. Um, you could use any dyeing, so you don't have to use only Hero Arts. You could use anything that you want. So I was really happy with the way that that turned out. I liked it a lot. I think it um, is a great dupe. Now, I tried it with the solid image also and I was not as happy with the results. I only did it one time. I didn't play around with it too much so I probably could have done a better job but for me and the way that I make projects and the way that I do you know work in my craft area um, I it's I did this technique several times with that amazing stamp before filming this video and every time it turned out the same and to me, that is a huge bonus. I mean, that's pretty much the reason why I won't be per probably won't be purchasing any more of the ombre the ombre ink pads because I like I said I want something that I'm gonna get the same results with or you know very similar results with every time. You'll see here it didn't do as great on this solid image and I think I just had too much of the red, so I don't know. But for me doing it with the masking off and using the three different ink pads, like I said, worked the best. But for this solid image, the ombre ink pad worked the best. So it's just a matter of preference. If if you're just starting out in stamping and you don't have three different shades of every color family that you want to use, then this is a great thing to get because then you get the option of doing all the, you know, having all those colors and you can always use smaller stamps and use the colors individually. And then you end up with a lot of variety. So here's kind of the results close up um, just to show you. And 
This is one of those ink formulations that does take time to dry. It has to soak into the paper and it does smooth out, which I am very impatient and I don't really like that property of these inks, but I always love the end result. So I'm also going to try and see what it looks like on craft paper. And I have to tell you, I stamped it and then I showed it to you guys and I didn't show you what it looked like dry. And it looks 10,000 times better on craft cardstock than it does on white cardstock, which I found really, really interesting. And I love to stamp on craft cardstock. So this, the major plus of this ombre ink pad for me is that it looks amazing on craft paper. Once that image dried smooth, I'll try to insert a picture at the end if I remember to take one and put it in here. Um, but I will, I will definitely put one on my blog post. It looks so good and it's vibrant and it just looks really, really pretty. So I love the way that it's stamped on craft. So if you guys are interested in these ink pads, I'll have some links below to them. I think they sell out pretty quickly, but I hope you've enjoyed this video and please remember that this is just my opinion. This is not sponsored by Hero Arts or anything. I purchased this ink pad and this is just what I think about it. So for all, by all means, if you are interested in these, purchase them and let me know what you think because I could be doing something totally wrong. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you all real soon. Bye.